All right. So where I left off, I didn't know if I wanted to reverse the eyes or not. And so I played with some, some ink tests. I brought those into Photoshop in the last video, cleaned them up, and I have two different PNG options. I have this option, which when I really shrink it small, it loses a little bit of its identity. Kind of looks more like a cartoon illustration maybe than a logo because the line weight is so thin that maybe it gets lost a little bit, but I like it. And then I have this option, which is inverted, but kind of keeps its integrity as a solid icon, even when really small. Right. This looks a little disturbing with that black skull kind of revealed, and then the bones in reverse. What I'm not sure of yet, you can see in, that in both, my speech bubble is not very clean, and that's something that Illustrator can definitely help me with. And I'm not sure if I want it filled like this or empty. So that's, those are things I can play with as well. So just like I brought in the sketch, what I can do is drag and drop these logo tests into Illustrator, and they'll open up in a new file, right? So you can't just drag them on as smart layers like you can in Photoshop, because these are raster. And this is a vector program. Another way you can do it is you can right click and you can open these PNG files with Illustrator and they'll open up. But notice they'll be whatever size they are based on your scan size on the physical dimensions, not the resolution. But if you use the large selection arrow, the black arrow, and hold down Shift and Option, you can grow them to fit the artboard that they give you so you can see it more clearly. And then the next option you have, well, I'll do it with both of them. This is how designers work. Graphic design is version heavy. You do lots of different versions of things. I'll open this up in Illustrator. You only have to make one version, but it's showing you the different ways you can play with it. So you can see it clearly. And this is still, you see, a raster image. You see those pixels are now very big. So how do I get it to be clean, like these vector shapes of the eye that I'm drawing? And no matter how much you zoom in, they're perfectly clean. Well, we do what's called live tracing them. So this is not just a sketch that I will then build shapes on top of. This is something I can use to make shapes that I can then alter within Illustrator. And I call it vectorizing. But you basically, just like you did to resize it, you click on it with the large selection tool until you see the, the transform box around it. And we click on image trace as the option, but I'm going to do the drop down and I want it to ignore all the, the white shapes and only make black shapes. So I, I go to silhouettes. And I click on that. And right now it's just previewing it for me, but you see immediately how much it cleaned it up and smoothed it out. And now, just in the preview, you can see how those are now vectors. It's no longer my scan. To get to the advanced options, which I recommend you all use before you hit expand and actually change it to a vector, you click here, and the advanced options you want, you always want it to ignore white. That's where silhouette comes in. But if you use something else, like um, instead of silhouettes, you can use the black and white logo. That would make sense but then you want to say, ignore white. <laughs> and you see this one is a little bit more permissive as a default setting. It lets a lot more through, whereas silhouettes kind of automatically cleans it up a lot for you. So these are the presets. So then you can also play with your th threshold. How much of the whites do you want to allow? How much of that noise do I want to allow? I kind of like a little bit of it in the shadow. I think I like a little bit of it in the skull. But I don't want that line to get too jagged. Right? So you play with these settings. Again, they can all be corrected later. You can play with um, how many paths you want. In general, we want fewer paths 
in a logo design. Fewer paths means the fewer individual cutout shapes you need. And so all that does is it, it makes it so these aren't all broken up into tiny little paths. <laughs> you see, that's no good. You want it nice and smooth. So I'll do a lower path count. Corners. If you have more corners, it allows for more accurate representation of your sketch, but it might also be a little bumpier. Actually, that doesn't look too bad. Or I can have fewer corners. And they're just different settings depending on your logo. Which, what do you think looks best? I'm going to put it somewhere in the middle. And then noise, this will clean it up for you. Do I want a lot of noise? Do I want to allow individual uh, paths that are one pixel or, or three pixels or bigger and give me that kind of woodblock tiled look, right? A lot of noise, or do I want only the shapes that are really large? So just allowing just the slightest bit and I think that's what I want. So once I'm happy with that preview, remember this is not a vector yet because I don't see the individual anchor points and I make sure ignore white is checked, then I can hit expand and that will turn it into the vector with the anchor points when I use the small selection tool. I did a pretty nice job. So that's one option. And then I can just modify that vector. So for instance, if I want to clean up the speech bubble, I'll have to work it from both the inside and the outside. But I can play with the curves here. I can move the bubble out, and then I can play with the outside of it. Kind of round it out. Play with the anchor tool and the curves. Or I can simply use the pencil tool to redraw it, smooth it out. I can set my pencil, especially if I use it with my tablet, to be more smooth. And then just hold down Option to get back to the small selection tool. And I always have to start and end on the path if I want to redraw instead of creating a new a new path. Oh, that looks nice and smooth. This might be a good place to use the smooth tool, which will automatically smooth for you. It's underneath the pencil tool. Once you have the anchor showing, you pretty much just redraw it, but it won't redo it. It will just smooth wherever you draw. So that smooths the outside. Or I'm sorry, the inside. Now let's move the outside. Yeah, much better. It kind of just averages everything, but sometimes it can do too much. And so Command Z will get you back. And then sometimes you just got to go right to the anchor point. and thicken it up from there. So that's not too bad. Okay, the other thing, because this is a silhouette, there are only uh, black shapes. I didn't save any white shapes. So it's not a bad idea to actually select everything with your large selection tool and then move it off the artboard onto the gray. So you can really see that because the logo needs to be versatile and work on different backgrounds. And that way I could even see, oh, I like this little highlight here. I could use the pencil tool to open that up. Then you use the small selection tools so you see the anchor points and then I use the pencil tool and I can redraw this and change that cutout shape. And then I can hit Command Z and see if I liked it or not. 
And then if I wanted to create a cutout, like I wanted that kind of shape cut out here, I would use the eraser tool, which I can double click on and set at whatever size I want. And I can make it pressure sensitive. This is good foreshadowing for what I'll show you later. If you're using a, a stylus with a tablet, you can make your tool not just whatever size you want, but you can make it pressure sensitive within the variation parameters you give it. So this isn't a very big brush, right? But it is now pressure sensitive so that I can go really lightly and kind of cut out that little detail in the eye. Then maybe I get really happy with it and I just do a lot of them. But that's not going to work well for a logo, right? Because I still want it to be simple, clear, and versatile. So I think I can get away with that. <laughs> Maybe I can get away with an extra one back here. No, that gives me the wrong texture. I can cut a few more from the shadow. But I love the, the variety of thick to thin that I can get with the tablet. Yeah, so I like that. Okay, so this is one logo solution. Another way to clean it up, though I don't think mine needs it too much, is I can select the whole thing and I can go to Object, Path, Simplify. And this is a lot like when I brought it in with Live Trace. If I show a preview and I show the original, basically if I push all the sliders all the way to the right, then it will be like I didn't do anything. But if I push the curve precision down, it will start to smooth it and the angle threshold down, it will start to smooth it more and more. And I decide what I'm comfortable with. The more I smooth it, the more, more I lose hard edges. But it will make everything oops, more consistent. So the difference between that and that. <laughs> And if you can't tell the difference, go with the one that's more simplified. It's more averaged across. It means everything will be a little smoother. Now, if I'm really, if I choose this as my final one and I get really picky, then I want to go into the individual design and clean up everything. Because this is a logo. And logo designers get paid not to have any mis flaws in their work. That's a lot to ask from a digital one student, right? But you can see how this is kind of a perfectionist dream that we can go in and redraw any anchor and smooth it out. Any shape, any little variation should be intentional. And smoother isn't always better. And uniform isn't always the best. But if you have a perfect circle in your design, make sure it's a perfect circle. You don't want these little kind of notches, which are still artifacts from live tracing. I want this to read maybe a little bit more clearly like a bone. And you can always use Command Z to see, and then Shift Command Z to go back. And then if I'm being really picky with this first option, I'm going to tighten up around the speech bubble just a little bit. Now this is all with filled paths. I'm not using any strokes. Because right? I want that to look kind of like spit as well as a speech bubble upside down. So the haunting. And I think I am going to widen this up a little bit and then I'll be done. 